So welcome to this presentation. It will be about Poseidon, which is a new hash function for zero knowledge proof systems. And this is joint work together with Lorenzo, Dimitri, Christian Arnab, and my name is Marcus. Okay, but before actually talking about this hash function, I want to give you a short introduction. So what are we actually trying to achieve? And for example, consider a private cryptocurrency spending scenario. And here we want to sign some transaction H, which is the hash value of some secret K and the metadata M. And after that, we want to add H to the Merkle tree, which contains the coins. And at some later point in the future, we want to prove that H is actually an element of the tree, but we also want to show that we actually know the secret K such that the hash of K and this metadata equals to H. And the difference to a classical scenario here is that H is used in a zero knowledge context. So for example, in Snark, Stark, or in Bulletproofs. And proving that this relation holds, so that H is actually an element of the tree, is in general expensive. So a question might be now, why don't we just use a traditional hash function, for example, uh, SHA-256? And the reason is that it's too expensive, and in early implementations of Zcash, uh, using SHA-256, it almost took one minute for proofs. And the reason is that the proof procedure is essentially is very similar for all of the systems. We usually try to express the proof verification algorithm as a circuit over some field. And then basically the generation time of the proof depends on the size of the circuit, on the width, and also on the degrees. And we can see that traditional hash functions are not very, very suited for that because they're mainly optimized for different things. So for example, they're optimized for performance on a certain architecture. So the design to the goal and the idea of this paper was to basically design something new, which is mm, better suited for these use cases here. So to recap, which properties are we actually looking for? We want to operate in a big finite field. So this can be a binary field, a prime field, but we are focusing on, on prime field here. And big means um, some so a field of a size of around 256 bits. And we also consider new metrics, for example, the degrees or the size of the circuit. And finally, of course, we also focus on the cryptographic security of the resulting construction. So that already brings me to this Poseidon permutation. So this is the permutation now, the Poseidon Pi permutation. And this is based on the Hades design strategy, which was proposed last year. And the idea of this strategy is to use a mixture of full nonlinear and partial nonlinear rounds. So this can be seen in this picture here, where we basically have here some rounds with full nonlinear layers, here partial ones, and at the end again, full nonlinear layers. And in each of the rounds, as the linear layer, we use an MDS matrix, a fixed one. Uh, but what is more important here is that we use an efficient S-box in all of the rounds. And this means that we use a low degree polynomial. For example, we have x to the power of 3 or x to the power of 5 for the S-box. And all of that results in a very flexible design, so we can choose different field sizes, but we can also, for example, change the number of S-boxes we use in each round. And if we have this permutation, so this Poseidon Pi permutation, we can very easily build a hash function, which is then the Poseidon hash function. And essentially, this is a very classical sponge hash construction. So we basically add our message elements in each call, and the C capacity elements, they remain untouched. And then we use basically a width of R plus C elements. And this P here is the Poseidon permutation from before. And then we can adjust this, of course. For example, we can adjust C according to our security level and the field size you want to use. So this is basically a classical sponge hash construction, but using our new permutation. And having designed both the permutation and the hash, we, of course, focus also on the cryptanalysis. So in particular, we focus on hash function specific cryptanalysis. So we are in a keyless setting here. And we also, for example, take a look, took a look on the constraint input, constraint output problem, but also on pre-image and collision attacks. And so we evaluated many strategies from the last couple of decades. 
And we found actually that algebraic attacks were the most promising against our construction. So for example, interpolation attacks and Grunner basis attacks. And the statistical attacks, which are another class of, of attacks, they are largely prevented by the external rounds. And this is actually a side effect of this Hades design strategy. And before, so in the introductory slide, I actually talked about Merkle trees. So how can we use sponges and Merkle trees? So for example, if we want to focus on an LED T, we can use a permutation of size T plus one. And here we can fix one element and take out one element. And in this example here, we have an arity of three. So a permutation size of three plus one, which is four. And essentially this continues like that, but this is on the layer here. And in the paper, we focus on arities of, for example, two, four, or eight. And all this decides at the end how efficient the resulting proof is in this Merkle tree. So what is important here is the efficiency of this F, which is essentially our construction. And for an example, to compare the efficiency, we can take a look and, at the number of rank one constraints. So essentially, this is a system of quadratic equations, which represents the whole construction. And here we can exploit the fact that we have single S-boxes in most of our rounds. So this is already very efficient. And we can even derive an optimized representation of our constraints by basically including the linear layer and also round constants in much fewer constraints. And finally, so this is not so important, the RF and RP number of full and partial rounds, but if we have these numbers, then we can very easily compute the total number of constraints we need for some Poseidon pi permutations, so for example, for that with the S-box x to the power of 5. And very similarly, we can also compute the number of levels which we would have in a Merkle tree with 2 to the power of m elements. And essentially, of course, this depends on the arity value which we choose. For the sake of the comparison, we can also focus on a security level of 128 bits. And our idea was then to compare basically in two directions. So first, in directions of number of rank one constraints. So how many constraints do we actually need? But then also to compare the regular hashing performance of the construction, because this is also very important in, in the use case. And then we basically have the setting where we want to prove the leaf knowledge in Merkle tree of two to the power of 30 elements. And this is now the scenario from the beginning of the presentation, essentially. And the result here is that we have a very low number of rank one constraints. And we have, for example, proof verification times of less than one second and up to 15 times the hashing performance of comparable competitors. And we can also take a closer look at that. So for example, this is a table showing the rank one constraints we have and the number of them and lower is better here. And we can see that for an arity of uh, eight to one, so essentially arity of eight and width nine, we can see that, that the number of total constraints is very low, the lowest here, and also lower than uh, these for rescue, which is a close competitor built for essentially uh, similar use cases. And what you can also see interestingly is that if we have this uh, traditional hash function SHA-256, which is essentially not built for this use case, but for, for other uh, metrics, for other things, uh, more traditional use cases, then we can see that the number of total constraints is much higher. And we can actually make also a very similar comparison with the runtime. And here we can see that for the same instantiations here, we can see that our hash function or our, our permutation, so this is the time which is needed for one call, and this is also much lower than uh, the, the time needed for the, the call of the competitors here, for example. So it's very efficient even in regular hashing. Com compare me. So what about implementations? So we have a hash function available in various languages, for example, Rust, Go, Sage, and C++. And we also have some circuit implementations available, and also the reference implementations of the, of the permutation are available online under this link here. But please make sure to use the version 1.1 since uh, some minor things have been fixed in this version. 
And what can you say about the, the use of Poseidon? So actually, it's already used in various protocols today. For example, Filecoin, Dusk Network, but also many, many others. And if you want to get more information about that, you can just follow these links here below. Okay, so thank you very much. And if you want to have more information, so please visit our website. Or if you want to ask us some questions, you can also send us an email here. Thanks.